everybody. So this is going to complete my collection right here. I have this Van Dorn Paris V5. This is the T35. I decided to get a more open facing for this classical saxophone mouthpiece. But is it just for classical or can you use this for jazz? So let's try this out and let's see what we got. No ligature. Aye. And we have our Van Dorn Paris T35. So I really like this part here. This is an excellent way to adjust the mouthpiece instead of grabbing it here where the ligature that they didn't give you would go. Aye. And we can take a look at these rails here. These rails don't look as wide as I thought they would be. One thing that I am noticing immediately about this mouthpiece is with this table, which is really, really flat, but you have these like Saturn looking rings that are going. This is the most prominent rings that I've seen on any mouthpiece. It feels very, very smooth. Hopefully that won't be an issue. It'll lay flat and this doesn't really look like a classical saxophone mouthpiece. It has this very circular chamber in here. It looks like there's a tiny bit of a forehead right at the top right here and a slight angle change. All this white stuff is just piece of the box because it was just sitting in the box like that. Aye. But this tip rail looks very even. Everything looks very balanced. And let's take a look at this chin area or this window. I like to call it a chin. You can see it's very rounded and then if I angle it on the inside like this it's pretty thick. Let's take a look at this inner triangle here. And it looks a bit concave. It has something of a slight auto link look to it when you look at this inner triangle here. And the inside triangle looks just a tiny bit concave, actually. All right, so let's set this thing up and see what we got. Definitely not your typical type of French school of classical saxophone sound. I think it's more flexible than the Selmer soloist, um, but it's different. <laughs> disengaged.
altissimo seems to be really easy. Let's chew four octaves. Uh -huh. 